children in the last class we have discussed about the chemical properties of metals in today's class how the non metal reacts with the oxygen huh, and other properties chemical properties of non metal first of all we have discussed about the chemical properties of non metals in that first reaction with oxygen how the non metals reacts with oxygen that we have to discuss example for non metals very good example is sulfur phosphorus these are the examples for non metals in that first we have to consider the reaction of sulfur with oxygen how this sulfur reacts with oxygen that you have to discuss for for this purpose we have to consider or you have to take one spoon that is called as deflagrating spoon that is called as deflagrating spoon uh, that is uh, like this spoon you can see here spoon this is deflagrating spoon you have to consider this spoon in that spoon you have to take a sulfur powder it is somewhat yellow color powder you have to take small amount of sulfur powder in a deflagrating a uh, tube so deflagrating spoon okay when, when you burn this as uh, what a sulfur uh, present in the deflagrating spoon it starts burning when it starts burning it starts producing a gas that is that gas is nothing but sulfur dioxide and this when sulfur reacts with oxygen of a and it forms a sulfur dioxide then what you have to do you have to introduce a burning a deflagrating spoon containing sulfur and it starts producing sulfur dioxide gas and you have to introduce that deflagrating spoon inside this jar this jar okay this is a jar inside this jar this jar should contain a small amount of a water you should you have to uh, careful that the air or the gas white color gas will be collected inside this this gas will not go outside the jar it should be closed properly and then sulfur dioxide gas the uh, present in this jar reacts with water small amount of water and you have to dissolve that properly small amount of water we are reacts with that and it forms a acid that acid is nothing but sulfurous acid that acid is nothing but sulfurous acid this acid uh, you are, it will become solution and it should be uh, mixed well and then you have to dip a litmus paper into this acid what happens i uh, have to dip a, a red litmus into that or blue litmus any litmus paper you can take and you have, you have to check whether it is uh, acidic or basic uh, oxides of non metals you know that oxides of metals are basic in nature but here what happens oxides of non metals oxides of non metals are acidic in nature because they turns blue litmus into red color that's why they are what the acidic in nature how the reaction will go on you have to explain now see sulfur burns i have explained about the reaction this reaction they have given in the textbook you have to uh, go to that you can read the textbook once again okay sulfur burns in the presence of oxygen and forms sulfur dioxide gas this yeah, this will be written as like this sulfur plus oxygen yes plus o2 gives so2 that is nothing but sulfur dioxide gas okay then when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in water and then it will be dissolved in water then it forms sulfurous acid that right? is sulfurous acid will be formed then sulfur dioxide dissolved in water so2 sulfur dioxide plus water and forms h2so3 it is a formula molecular formula of sulfurous 
acid. H two S O three not sulfuric acid here. This is sulfurous acid. Sulfuric acid is H two S O four and sulfurous acid is H two S O three. You have to remember properly when sulfur dioxide dissolved in water. Sulfur dioxide gas dissolved in water. It forms a what sulfurous acid. This is when you dip the red blue litmus paper into the a sulfurous acid. What happens? This acid turns blue litmus paper into red. Then it indicates that the oxides of non-metals, oxides of non-metals are a acidic in nature. You can conclude that oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature, but oxides of metals are Basic in nature because they turn red litmus into blue. Okay, here it turns blue litmus paper into red. That's why it is considered as a, what? Hmm? Acidic in nature. Non-metals, oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature. Oxides of non-metals is what? This is the oxide of non-metal. This is sulfur dioxide. Sulfur oxide. Oxides of non-metal. That's why oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature. That you have to remember. Oxides of metals are basic in nature. Oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature. This is the experiment to uh, understand the experiment of sulfur with oxygen as well as water. This jar you have to consider deflagrating tube, uh, sorry, uh, spoon you have to take and you have to burn the sulfur. Should not burn the sulfur directly because it will be dangerous. That's what you have to take this much of apparatus and you have to perform the experiment. This is about the reaction of metals as well as non-metals with oxygen. Next we have to discuss about reaction with water. How the metals and non-metals react with water we have to discuss. First of all we will consider the metals, reaction of metals with water. Reaction with water I told. Reaction of metals with water. First, what you have to do one experiment. You know that sodium and potassium are highly reactive metals and they are soft metal. They can cut with the help of knife. Okay, but uh, they are very reactive with air and water, potassium as well as uh, sodium. Now, uh, to understand the property of sodium with water, we have to conduct one experiment. You have to take a small piece of sodium metal and you have to wrap with the help of tissue paper. You should not touch with the help of bare hand because it will uh, burn your hand. It is uh, very dangerous. That's why you have to take uh, what, what is it called? Hmm? You have to take you have to touch with the help of tissue paper or you can touch with the help of pair of tongs. Okay, then you have to put the small drop of or the small piece of sodium into the water containing beaker. And when you dip that it burns, uh, sorry, it rotates and it forms a bubbles forms bubble and it is forming a uh, so sound sound it will produce and it will uh, rotate like this and it will burn and sometimes it may catch fire also that's why it should be somewhat far away from the uh, beaker and sometimes it may catch fire and it also produces a gas the gas will come out from this that is liberating hydrogen gas and sodium metal will become uh, it will not be present here and the solution will change into somewhat whitish color and then it will produce gas and sometimes it may catch fire also. That's why you should be, uh, take small uh, piece of sodium and sodium is very dangerous. That's why you have to take um, small piece. When you put large amount, it may catch fire and it may blast beaker also. Next, then what happened? This, during this reaction, a lot, a lot of Heat is liberated. Okay, if you touch this beaker, it will become hot. Okay, that is why during this reaction, a lot of heat is liberated. Okay, now what happens? Sodium, here I have shown sodium metal, water, beaker, 
and hydrogen gas is coming out from this uh, during the reaction. Now, you know, commonly you can say that metals react with water forming the respective hydroxide liberating hydrogen gas. Hydroxide means sodium reacts with water and forms sodium hydroxide. Potassium reacts with water and forming potassium hydroxide and along with hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is liberated. Now see, I have written reaction sodium plus water and it will form sodium hydroxide and plus hydrogen gas is liberated. See, this one sodium again sodium Na plus H2O and gives NaOH sodium hydroxide and H2 gas upward aromatic. So, this is 2 and 2 here written for balancing the number of atoms of both the side LHS and RHS. Potassium was water. Potassium is written as K and H2O and it gives potassium hydroxide KOH and H2O. Now, then you can come to that metals react with water and forming respective hydroxide liberating hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is liberated. Next, some other metals for example magnesium, calcium, iron, aluminium, they do not react with water easily. They may react with steam also. They can react easily with steam but they do not react with water at normal room temperature that you have to remember. Iron reacts with water slowly and this <coughs> Steam, uh, will, they may react with steam and they produce different types of products, magnetic oxide, all those things you will study in the next, maybe in the ninth standard you will study. Next, I told that this sodium and potassium, they are very reactive metals. Uh, this sodium is react very vigorously react with air and water. That's why it is stored in a, a kerosene. Uh, they are stored in kerosene because they are very reactive with air and water. This, uh, commonly this question will be asked why sodium is stored under kerosene. Okay, sodium metal is very reactive. It reacts vigorously with oxygen and water. A lot of it is generated in the reaction. It is therefore stored in kerosene. Only the main purpose is they are very reactive with air and water. Some non-metals, usually non-metals do not react with the water. Okay, non-metals do not react with water, but non-metals are very reactive with air. That's why non-metals like phosphorus, they are stored in the water. So, I have written here, non-metals do not react with water. Non-metals are very reactive in air. So, they are stored in water. Example, phosphorus. Why phosphorus is stored in water? They may ask. Because they are, they do not react with water and they are very reactive in air. That's why they are stored in the water. This is about the reaction of metals and non-metals with water. Okay, if you have any doubt, you can ask. These reactions you have to remember and you have to practice while explaining it will be easy for you and while writing in the exam it will be difficult. That's why you have to write and practice this reaction. Okay, if you have any doubt you can ask. In the next class we will discuss about the reaction of metals and non-metals with acids, different acids, how they will react with acids. Okay, thank you.